There you go. So there's this common myth that if someone drops a penny from the Empire State Building, that by the time it hits the ground, it'll be going so fast that it can kill a guy. And Mythbusters tested this and so did Veritasium, and they both said that it's false, as coins will fall on their flat side and won't be travelling fast enough to do any damage. But they are forgetting something. If it was me standing on top of the Empire State Building throwing pennies off doing the world's cheapest terrorist attack, I'd be throwing them like this, putting some spin on them so they fall on the skinny face the whole way down. And they also forgot about Aussies that might be visiting America, as we have these bad boys. The 50 cent coin, the heaviest coin in circulation, weighing 10 times more than a penny. And it's also built like a ninja star with these sharp points. It's almost like our government designed them to kill New Yorkers. So today, I'm going to put these coins to the test and see if a falling coin can actually kill you. All right, now the first thing I did was grab a bunch of 50 cent coins and went into my garage and started throwing them at the wall. And I was pretty happy with what I saw, some nice big holes. And also the spin I was putting on the coins seemed to make them stay on the skinny side, but I have no idea how fast I'm throwing them. So I made this measuring stick with lines every 10 centimeters and then used this camera filming at 240 frames per second to see how fast they're going. And this makes absolutely no sense. Either I'm really bad at maths or I should be signed to a major league baseball team. Because in one frame, the coin traveled 20 centimeters. So if we times that by 240, we get 48 meters a second, which is 170 kilometers per hour, which is faster than the fastest baseball pitch ever. And that's even with my bad form trying to not break my arm on my belt sander. But my maths must be wrong. So I bought a device I've dreamed of having ever since I was a five year old this chronograph, which should give accurate speed measurements. So I added some extra protection to the chronograph to stop me from doing that again, and then threw some coins through it. Twenty-seven point five. Twenty-eight. And that was disappointing. Turns out I can only throw a coin at 30 meters a second or 110 kilometers per hour. Okay, now that we know I can throw coins kind of fast, I need to work out the terminal velocity of a 50 cent coin. And to do that, I'm gonna copy what Adam Savage did in Mythbusters and make a wind tunnel. And he used acrylic tube, which is kind of expensive. So instead I just ate some yogurt. And then used that with some plastic sheet to make this tunnel. Then I just slapped a leaf blower on the bottom with a basket that I stole from Bunnings so the coin doesn't fall back inside and blow up the leaf blower. And this isn't really working. I think it's too wide and the air isn't flowing through evenly. So I made a smaller one. And now it works. And by drilling holes in the side, I can also control the airspeed. And at the bottom, it's coming in at 70 kilometers per hour. And in the top, it's around 50. And you can see that now the five cent coins, which are similar to pennies, flutter around and stay in one spot in the tube, meaning its terminal velocity on the face is around 60 kilometers an hour, which is what the Mythbusters estimated it to be. Then I tried spinning the coin on the skinny side. And that went straight through the tube. So I bumped up the airspeed to 80 kilometers an hour and tried again. And that also went through. And in spinning it on the skinny face increased the terminal velocity to 120 kilometers an hour, which is where it started to dance around and fly in one spot. All right, now what about a 50 cent coin? And that falls straight through the tube. So I bumped the airspeed up to 150 kilometers, which is as fast as this air thing will measure. And the 50 cent coin just falls right through. And apparently this air blower goes up to 270 kilometers per hour. So I put it on the maximum speed and spun in the 50 cent coin. 
and it still makes it all the way through. So either the leaf blower isn't actually doing 270 kilometers an hour, or the terminal velocity of a 50 cent coin on its skinny face is more than that. So I'm just gonna say it's at least 270 kilometers per hour. And now that I know that, I need to figure out some way to fire the coin at that speed to see how much damage it does. My first thought was to use blank rounds, but they would be way too powerful. I'm gonna try to avoid making a gun in this video. And after looking around my garage, the easiest thing I could think of was my spear guns, which I have a lot of because I'm compensating for something. I have a really tiny penis. You are really bad at that. Okay, I cut off the rubbers and then welded some bar together and attached it all to this stock from the camera gun I made years ago. And then I put this Chinese slingshot mechanism in the top and loaded it up. And this is absolutely terrifying to load. I was expecting to find out how much damage my fingers did to my garage wall. But eventually I managed to fire some coins. Four, three, two. Whoa. And at first I liked what I saw. So I attempted to shoot it through the chronograph. Then went through and said 25 meters a second. So I'm, I'm throwing it. I'm throwing it faster. And that's very disappointing. So I need to come up with something else. Then I saw my grinder and thought I can probably use it like one of those ball throwing things. And Corin, if you're watching this, I know when you gave me the grinder, you told me not to do anything stupid with it, but this is just too perfect. And the coins seem to fit right in. I can throw it so much faster. Never mind, it didn't go fast enough. So I'm going back to the spear gun idea, but this time I'm gonna make it stronger by making it weaker with these thinner rubbers, which should be easier for me to stretch. And I also made a nice smooth track with this wood and aluminum rails. And I'm also not gonna rely on that slingshot trigger from China, not because it's bad or Chinese, but just because I somehow lost it while taking it apart. So I'm gonna design my own trigger mech. And after sketching up some designs on this desk that was sent to me by the sponsor of this video, FlexiSpot, which is this awesome adjustable standing desk that stops me from breaking my back like I usually do when making things. This is what I came up with, which didn't seem to work. So I made it out of metal, which should hopefully be strong enough for the rubbers. Also, I learned something pretty cool from your mum last night, a new kind of knot called a constrictor knot, which works really well for tying rubbers together. And after slapping myself a couple of times, wow. I finally got the rubber configuration right, and the fastest speed I recorded was 215 feet per second or 230 kilometers per hour. And that is fast enough for me. And I don't know why these weaker rubbers were stronger, but maybe it's something to do with the lightness of the coin and the speed at which these lighter, quicker rubbers contract. Or maybe it's just because they're pink. Now I just need to shoot some stuff with it. And I'm gonna start with eight mil plywood, which I've heard from people online is similar to the strength of a human skull, which seems wrong, but if it means I can shoot through it, then I'm gonna say it's accurate. I have a feeling these rubbers are going to snap soon. Right on cue. Three, two. It's only 50. It went straight through. And the coins easily went through and also managed to stay on the flat edge. So we know that a coin traveling 230 kilometers an hour can go through plywood, but I'm still not happy. I need something thicker. So I'm gonna shoot the desk that the FlexiSpot sent me. Yes. That is impressive. It made a dent, but it's small. And besides being coin proof, the desk has some awesome other features like an impressive 15 year warranty and super solid table legs that move up and down without any wobble as they are designed with incredibly high tolerances. The legs are also made out of high carbon steel, 
which snapped all of my drill bits when I attempted to drill through them. I don't think I've ever seen a table that is this solid. This desk is really nice for a tall guy like me, as my normal working desks are way too low and wobbly, so the FlexiSpot desk increases my productivity while also not hurting my back, and I can adjust it quickly on the fly for anything I need to do, like drinking water. I also put a FlexiSpot in my study, which is so nice to use while I'm working on my computer, as I don't have to bend at all. The tabletop is also made out of a highly resistant material, which is great for me as I'm always spilling stuff on tables or missing my page while drawing. So go click the link in the description to go buy an awesome FlexiSpot standing desk. Okay, now I need a real head. And I was gonna make a ballistic head like all the gun YouTubers, but I've never trusted the plastic skulls inside or the ballistic gel. So instead I just bought a pig head, which is similar in weight and size to most Americans. Of course I got crossbow. Good to just slap your feet. <laughs> okay, three, two, one. Hey, oh, oh big boy. Is that it? You went in. Oh wow. And that went in so much deeper than I thought it was going to, going all the way through the cheekbone and probably like an inch deep into the head. Three, two, one. That's deeper. Yeah, wow. And that time I aimed for the skull and the coin went straight through, burying itself like two inches into the head. And that confirms that a 50 cent coin traveling at 230 kilometers per hour would kill you. But I'm still not happy with this. I need to do a real test from a proper height. And a ticket to New York is $2,000. So instead I 3D printed this magazine for the 50 cent coins and glued it onto this drone dropping device. And now when I press this button, the wire falls off releasing the coins. Yes. I also put the magazine on an angle so the coins hopefully roll out with some spin instead of dropping straight out. Now the only problem is that I need to be underneath the drone while it's dropping potentially deadly coins, but I'll deal with that later. So then I went out to a spot that hopefully shouldn't have any children running around, the car park of a church. Ah. Hey, it works. It works? That's working. Why is it not listening to me though? Why is it not coming down? Wait, what are you doing? You, do you know, maybe you don't know how to operate it. And I'm having some drone troubles, which I just chose to ignore. And I'd lay down a piece of nine mil plywood as the target with some skulls on it, which I don't think I have any chance of hitting. This just doesn't really feel like a science experiment, you know? What? In this car park that we're not meant to be in, in the wind, just trying to drop something off a drone that doesn't come down. And can you, can we set up the table so we can hide underneath it? Yes. I don't want a coin in my head. <laughs> I'm not even making jokes. I know, I just said that. As one workplace safety. And for my own shelter, I'm going to use the FlexiSpot desk on top of my car since I know it's coin proof. So go buy your own coin proof FlexiSpot desk and enjoy a no minimum purchase $30 discount with code IDAT30 on your E7 FlexiSpot purchase. Okay, as soon as I got the drone in the air, I could tell it wasn't happy with the extra weight I added on and the drone wouldn't come down. So I figured it was best to deal with that later and take it up to 200 meters or 600 feet in case I don't get another chance to drop them. Let's get in the car. Hey, go, go. I am scared now. 90. Oh, what have you, can you still see it? 110, 120. 150. Oh, I'm not even recording on that. You're gonna run out. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, I'm gonna drop. I feel like I'm Palestinian. I'm gonna drop. Wait up, wait one second. It's gonna move so much. Okay, ready? Wait, wait. Three, two, one. Might have dropped. It looks like it's coming towards us. I'm meant to be able to hear it. How long does it take for a coin to fall? Come here. Oh, way back there. That took a very long time. That was somewhere in the bushes. Okay, this is... 
And we weren't really sure what happened, but after watching the footage again, you can see the coins didn't spin on the flat face at all. And once they were dropped, they took flight and spun 200 meters sideways out of frame of the drone. And I'm actually very glad they didn't spin on the skinny edge as they were heading right for Alexa and I in the car. And also I might've murdered these passers by, which I didn't notice. So after spending 30 minutes getting the drone down. Okay. It's a nice half an hour descent. <laughs> we headed out to a dam, which is 45 meters tall or 150 feet to throw the coins off with spin. Yeah, you look like a goblin. You're getting vertigo. Yeah, I'm not gonna throw coins on you, I swear. Fairly straight. That looks alright. That falls dead straight. Oh, yeah. Whoa, hello. And it is really cool seeing the different spin makes. And the coins fell in a dead straight line on the skinny face the whole way down. And they also did some decent damage to the plywood, even though they hit it only doing like 100 kilometers per hour. That would hurt. But it, it, you'd bleed, you'd be bleeding like a would, lot. You would be bleeding, that's from 40 meters. And what the Empire State Building's 10 times higher than that. That's high. It was. It was. Oh wait, no, that's not Twin Towers. <laughs> <laughs> so I reckon that if someone spun a coin like this off the Empire State Building, it would stay on the skinny edge and reach speeds of at least 270 kilometers per hour, which is more than enough to pierce your skull and kill you. Which is why I recommend everyone in New York walk around with a pig head above them at all times. Thank you so much for watching. If you like that, please subscribe and check out some of my other stuff.